In the last video on propeller analysis, we concluded by saying that the velocity through the disk was the average between the slipstream velocity and the um, free stream velocity. Right, so let's say that the velocity of the disk going through here, V0, is equal to the free stream velocity, V, plus some induced velocity, Vi, due to the presence of the propeller blade, you know, because that's what happens as as the air goes through the propeller, the propeller giving it some some energy. So V naught is equal to V plus VI. Where VI is uh, just this free stream velocity multiplied by some factor. Uh, let's call it a, an inflow factor uh, A. Well, uh, we saw that v from down here that um, the velocity through the disk was half of slipstream plus the uh, free stream. And I also know that this velocity was equal to V times 1 plus A. Okay, so it's the free stream velocity plus the induced velocity, which is AVI therefore multiplying across by 2 uh, I get that and bringing the V to one side and multiplying this out I get an expression for the slipstream ferocity which uh, just these cancel reduces to this and uh, finally we can say that the slipstream velocity is equal to free stream velocity multiplied by 1 plus 2 times an inflow factor Okay, so there it is. So what good is that to us? Well, the report uh, required from the propeller or the engine um, is equal to the change in kinetic energy. So whatever the air had here, whatever kinetic energy it has here, and it has some kinetic energy over here. So the difference in kinetic energy is the power required by the propeller. So the change in kinetic energy, which is the power, is half mv squared, so half the mass flow of the air times the change in velocity from the slipstream to the free stream over here. Well I know that the mass is equal to rho s v naught, but I also know that the velocity air through here is just this free stream velocity multiplied by a factor. Um, so this equation for m, I can say it's half rho s v plus 1 plus a times v s squared minus v. But we started all of this by having an expression for v s, so I can put that in there. And when I do that and multiply it all out, I can get that the change in kinetic energy um, or the power is equal to 2 rho s v cubed a times 1 plus a squared. Similarly, the thrust, well, thrust is mass by acceleration. There's the mass of the air, uh, same as this up here. And the acceleration is a change in velocity, so that's Vs minus V. But I have an expression uh, for Vs, and if I substitute that in, I will get that the thrust produced is 2 rho S V squared A plus 1 plus A. So, the efficiency of a propeller is comparing the power in to the thrust produced by the propeller times the velocity of the aircraft going forward. So I have T, 2 rho s v squared a plus a, multiply that by v, I just get this. And the power we had up here, uh, bring that down into the denominator. And you'll notice everything cancels out and we're left with 1 over 1 plus a. So the efficiency of the propeller is 1 over 1 plus a. Okay, so we started by saying that the velocity through here was v plus the induced velocity uh, and that the induced velocity was equal to a, the inflow factor a times the, the free stream velocity Therefore, I can say that 
a the inflow factor is equal to vi over b the induced velocity over the free stream velocity so that was our thrust from the previous uh, slide and that was our power but if we look at our thrust uh, I can stay instead of a it's vi over b and substitute vi over v for a there um, haven't done anything with the equation there but if I multiply it out um, I can get this expression okay so I've divided uh, got rid of the, the V's Okay, so the v squared gets rid of uh, this factor here, and we're left with the thrust is equal to 2 rho s vi v plus vi, the induced velocity vi. Similarly, for the power, I'm substituting vi over v in. Um, I've multiplied this part of it out, and that's what I get. Um, that reduces to this because I've multiplied v in by them all and if I have an expression like that that is the equivalent of saying it's a V plus VI squared so I have an expression for the trust and an expression for the power two similar expressions okay okay so let's look at these on the thrust if I multiply it out so 2 rho s V VI that guy plus 2 rho s vi squared here is equal to the trust. I'm going to bring the all to one side. So I'm going to bring the t across. And we get an uh, equation like this, where instead of vi, we consider that something like x. And that's x and that's c. We have an ax squared plus bx plus c. So we can solve this. As such, so therefore x from this our case vi is equal to minus b, so it's minus two rho s v plus or minus square root v squared, which is uh, two rho s v squared minus four ac. So four by a is two rho s, and c is minus t, so minus minus by a minus gives you a plus, all over two a, which is two rho s. that equation now reduces down and uh, what I've done is uh, I've got rid of the 2 so that was 2 squared which is 4 plus 4 so I brought that outside the brackets so square root of 4 is 2 so I have a 2 up here and a 2 up here which divided by 2 uh, is 1 right, so that's that And so now I've just split the equation up. Uh, rho s divided by that, so that just becomes minus v over 2, plus or minus. And this 2 rho s, um, I to bring it inside, I had to square it. So I now have an expression for the induced velocity, which is uh, v over minus v over 2, plus or minus uh, this expression here. Well, these... Uh, cancel out uh, and reduces to this and I'm just going to bring the V2 across this side now what is, why have I got rid of the minus well the VI can't be a negative number it has to be a positive number so that's why I'm using the plus so an expression for free I induced velocity. Similarly with the power, uh, that there is the trust and V plus VI. So just rearranging that equation, I get that. So I can say <coughs> that the power is equal to trust times velocity plus the induced velocity. That's what we had in the previous slide. Um, v 
minus v over 2 just gives me v over 2. So, if you remember back, we said that neta was equal to 1 over 1 plus a. We know that a is v over vi. So it's 1 over 1 plus vi. I have an expression for vi. I'm going to put that in there. So the coefficient z is 1 over 1 plus all of this. That reduces down for that. So I have 1 minus a half, which is plus a, just a half. And I have my final equation for the efficiency of a propeller. Hope that helps.